All right, Neil. Can you talk to us a little bit about the specifics of each course? Like really, what do you focus on for each one of the four-part series? Yes. Um, let me split that up a little bit differently and say, um, uh, let, let me talk about part one course. Practitioners won't quite understand exactly what it is unless I explain and, and break down the details of it because each section is like a course in, in itself. Um, most doctors do not quite understand the difference between Premarin and Provera and estradiol and progesterone. We all know that hormones are bad. We see literature quoted all the time that Premarin and Provera are bad or that hormones are bad. So in the WHI trial, in the HERS trial, we saw and we learned that indeed, Premarin and Provera can increase the risk of heart attacks, blood clots, and breast cancer. That's why everyone fears hormones. But throughout the literature, we see every time a woman goes into menopause, there's an increase in heart disease, there's an increase in dementia, there's an increase in Alzheimer's disease, there's an increase in osteoporosis, there's an increase in disease and illness when women go into menopause. So damned if you do, damned if you don't. So we know that it's bad when you lose your hormones, but it's also bad when you replace the hormones. No, not quite. People don't understand it here in the United States because we tend to be using or taught or focus on Premarin and Provera, the synthetic hormones, if you let me use those terms. Whereas in Europe, they typically don't use that. In all those European studies, they typically use estradiol and progesterone. So in every study with progesterone, there's no increased risk of breast cancer. In fact, there's a decreased risk of breast cancer. In every study with estradiol, there's no increased risk of blood clots. There's no increased risk of heart attacks or strokes. There's no increased risk of dementia. In fact, there's a decrease in dementia. And combined estradiol and progesterone have not been shown to be harmful in any study, either here in the United States or in Europe. But everyone will still think and extrapolate the harm of Premarin Provera, that you shouldn't take hormones, and yet the mistake is don't extrapolate the harm of Premarin Provera. They are not the same. There's significant increased risk of blood clots, breast cancer, heart attacks, and strokes with Premarin Provera that we do not see in any study with estradiol and progesterone, and those are the hormones that we typically lose at menopause. Simply replace what we had before. So you have to use our medical literature and our science to try to figure out what to do and why. But most physicians don't understand that. Most of the medical academies that are supported by, sorry to say this, the pharmaceutical industry will still continue to say, well, you need to use conventional hormones. But currently, the recommendation from ACOG and NAMS is use the smallest dose for the shortest period of time and stop it. But when you stop it, then you have all the increase in heart disease, dementia, osteoporosis, and death and morbidity and mortality associated with menopause. So why would you want to stop it? Well, you have to stop it because there's harm. <laughs> well, don't use those hormones that cause harm. Use estradiol and progesterone, which have not been shown to be harmful in any study. So we review all of that. We review all the literature showing, no, there's no risk of heart attacks, strokes, DVTs, PEs, or breast cancer with estradiol and progesterone. In fact, in every study, there's a decrease. Multiple studies show a significant improvement in risk, improvement in lipids, and a decrease in heart attacks and strokes and morbidity and mortality with estradiol and progesterone. But we ignore all those studies, even though it's published in our peer review literature, because of the overwhelming promotion or hype from the WHI trial. We should take the WHI trial and say, yes, you should not use Premarin Provera based on the WHI and the HERS trial. But that does not apply to estradiol or progesterone because in every study subsequent to those studies, we have not seen any harm at all, only benefits. So we go through that literature and show and prove to the doctors that estradiol and progesterone are safe. And of course, the medical literature is what we have to hang our hat on. There's significant benefits, there's health benefits, there's improvement of symptomatology for menopause when we use estradiol and progesterone, but because it's not patented, it sort of falls between the cracks. And because of the NAMS and ACOG promoting synthetic hormones in the past, um, it's difficult to get over that hump. So once a practitioner understands the safety and efficacy of estradiol and progesterone, then it all makes sense. And that's what we go through in the estrogen and progesterone section. In addition to that, Many doctors are not aware of the tremendous benefits of progesterone in treating and preventing PMS or cyclical migraines. Progesterone is extremely important in treating the symptomatology in premenopausal women, and there's really nothing else that helps. And progesterone is just 
marvelous at treating PMS, at preventing the complications of PCOS with miscarriage, increase in diabetes, heart disease, et cetera. So progesterone is an extremely important hormone in premenopausal women, and we teach the doctors how to use that and the importance of it, and we go through a complete two-hour literature review on the benefits and how to prescribe progesterone to premenopausal women. It's also beneficial for postmenopausal women for breast cancer protection and, of course, to protect the uterus against estrogen stimulation. But the side effects of the progesterone, which are so horrific, meaning it helps women sleep, they feel and function so much better with oral progesterone taken at bedtime. And you also get the uterine cancer and breast cancer protection and the cardiovascular protection that you fail to get with Provera, which does just the opposite. There's significant side effects, problems, and complications to medroxyprogesterone acetate that are not seen at all in any study with micronized progesterone. Same thing applies to estradiol. Multiple studies show that Premarin has been shown to be protective against cardiovascular disease, but there's an increased risk of blood clots, DVTs and PEs. Whoops. Well, we don't want that. And in older women, there might be a slight increased risk of plaque rupture or heart attacks, which we don't want. But we don't see the potency or estrogenicity of Premarin causing those plaque ruptures with estradiol, because in no study do we see any increase in heart attacks, strokes, in older or younger women with estradiol. And most clinicians don't know or understand that. And most cardiologists don't understand it either. There's tremendous protective effects, and all of the outcome studies show significant improvement in morbidity and mortality with estradiol that you don't get with statins. But everyone gets a statin, and nobody gets estradiol because they think it's harmful, just like Primin and Provera, but it's not. So part of this course is trying to deprogram everyone's confirmation bias against female hormones, which are estradiol and progesterone taking it a step further. Well, if those are so beneficial for cardiovascular protection in women, what about men? Well, men, it's testosterone. Most cardiologists, most physicians that have a confirmation bias against testosterone don't understand the plethora of data showing the cardiovascular protective effects of testosterone. It will increase HDL and lower HD, excuse me, LDL and lower triglycerides. It does not increase the risk of diabetes as do statins. In fact, it will decrease diabetes because it reduces visceral fat and subcutaneous fat. In every single solitary randomized controlled trial, as far as outcome studies are concerned, testosterone has significant beneficial effect in reducing cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. Even in patients that have significant cardiovascular disease as a premorbid state, giving all of these individuals testosterone results in significant decrease in events, heart attacks, strokes, morbidity, mortality, and death. You do not see any of that with any statin. I'm not trying to badmouth statins. I'm just saying that the two or three percent absolute risk reduction is inadequate for a complete reversal of cardiovascular disease. We don't see plaque reversal with the statins. Minimal in some studies. There's a multitude of studies showing plaque reversal in coronary artery calcium and intermediate thickness with testosterone, and these are long-term studies also. So most doctors are completely unaware of the tremendous cardiovascular protective effects of hormones that kill 90% of men and women. And we go through all that literature and show doctors how to prescribe it, why we should prescribe it, and all the medical studies to support safety and efficacy of it. And then we also go through the other side of the coin, the flawed studies that everyone wants to hang their hat on, why they're flawed, so that we can understand that's another hormone that's of great benefit health-wise, but most doctors do not understand it or grasp it. As far as women, it's a woman's hormone also. There's tremendous beneficial effects on how women feel and function when we prescribe testosterone to them. There's sexual benefits, improvement in libido, sexual function, orgasmic ability, improvement in their structure. Structure means anabolic, anything that holds them upright muscles, ligaments, joints, tendons, bones, skin. Men do not know where their skin is. Women look in the mirror every five minutes. There's tremendous data in the dermatologic literature showing the beneficial effects of testosterone on the skin that most women are not aware of and most doctors are not aware of it either. 
So all hormones have health benefits. And when you lose the hormone, you lose the health benefit. And there's a detrimental effect on your health. So we review all that literature to explain all the data and studies to support safety and efficacy that doctors need to know and understand. But they don't because there's no venue to teach all the doctors this. The most controversial hormone that we provide that has been such a boon to our practice. And it is difficult to describe it because most doctors were taught and trained just as I was, which is different than the way the nurses taught and trained me, and that's thyroid. If your TSH is elevated, then according to guidelines, it's okay to prescribe thyroid. But most doctors don't understand that using just T4 does not work in the majority of patients and you have to add T3 in order to truly get an effect. I was taught and trained, well, if the body needs T3, it'll make it from T4, and if it doesn't need it, it won't make it. Not true in every study. A most recent study published two months ago shows that, and it's published in the Endocrine Journal, we need to stop using TSH as a method for monitoring and adjusting thyroid because it doesn't correlate with symptom improvement, and we really need to start looking at T4 and T3 levels and optimizing those levels in order to affect a change in symptomatology. There's plenty of data and studies on it, but we ignore it because it's not the way we're taught and trained and it's not what the guidelines show. But once physicians sit through a three-hour lecture and look at all the data and the studies that I present, they'll scratch their heads and say, how did this slip through the cracks? Why were we not taught this? And then when they start to prescribe it and see the improvement in patients' symptoms and improvement in their well-being, it becomes a no-brainer, but that's not the way that you and I were taught or trained. So it's very controversial. The endocrine societies do not like using T3. They only believe in T4, and that's politics and economics at its finest. But when you really look at all the studies that are out there, and I use all the scientific literature to show and support why we do what we do, when you optimize T3, there will be improvement in symptoms, health, wellness, visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, symptoms of cold, tired, and fatigue, cholesterol levels will improve, HDL levels will improve, blood sugars will improve, hemoglobin A1C levels will improve, and you're not going to be able to accomplish that with T4 based on the literature that shows that T3 works much better than T4. So we use a combination of both. It is a hard concept to grasp because it's not the way that we were taught and trained. I understand that. But once you see the literature, and once you see the overwhelming data from the literature that supports the safety and efficacy of optimizing T3, it will be amazed, you will be amazed at why we don't all do it. But it's because there's no venue that teaches us this. So the courses are designed to show us all the medical literature, science, and studies that we should know but don't know. And that's why people say it's the best general course in medicine that we've ever seen because it addresses preventive medicine through hormone replacement. And that, in a nutshell, is what we do.